<clears throat> Hi guys, welcome back to episode 2 for 2017 on the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast and um, today we're joined by a special guest, uh, the owner and founder of Massive Joe's, Joseph Mensell. So welcome to the show, man. Thanks, Danny. Pleasure to be here, man. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, I know a number of people have kind of recommended that I try and get you on the show at some oh, stage. Really? So uh, <laughs> I thought, while I'm in Adelaide, I may as well, Why not? May as well get it done. So basically, yeah. guys, today what we're going to talk about um, is a lot of stuff about training, nutrition, and supplementation. Um, but we'll also throw in a few things um, about Massive Joe's and tips that Joe has for um, running a business or or anyone that's wanting to kind of um, start a business with their idea or something they've been wanting to do for a while. So we'll kick things off with um, a little bit of background about your training, nutrition. So Let's do it. Um, when did you first start, first start lifting? I first started lifting, if you, if you go back to like my first experience with, with weight training, um, was actually for basketball was to improve um, my vertical leap. Honestly, yeah, it was the first thing, but, but let's, let's say, uh, you know, overall performance as a, as a performance-based based athlete for basketball. And I was first introduced to weights when I was uh, 14 yeah. um, by my father. And it was just real basic stuff, like a lot of body weight, you know, yeah. chin-ups, push-ups, yeah. um, sit-ups. Yeah, yeah, just the, just the, you know, the real foundation. I yeah. mean, I was a young teenager, so, you know, yeah, yeah. my dad didn't want me stuffing around with weights. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was kind of my first introduction to, to resistance training I guess yeah um, and then it kind of progressed from there so you know I, I, I took a keen interest in it um, you know even though basketball was was my my primary focus I kind of really enjoyed the resistance type trainings and then progressed to you know lifting some basic weights in, in a yeah. home gym and and then it kind of you know kind of went from there yeah so. it's pretty much exactly the same as, as me to be honest yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, was, I was basketball all the way up until uh, nearly five years ago and I always kind of liked the strength side of things um, and then I had ankle surgery and I, one yeah. thing led to another and then bang yeah I think you I think you either get introduced to, to resistance training from a performance athletics point of view so for you know to increase your performance in whatever performance sport you're playing or you're interested in it from a vanity point of view right yeah. uh, I think that those are the two main uh, drivers of people yeah, actually getting into the gym and lifting weights yeah. So, yeah. and something I ask um, a lot of guys uh, relatively often is what are some of the mistakes or, or some of the things that you feel like you almost wasted your time with early days or thing probably better, probably the better way to word it is things that you look back on now yeah. that you would do differently if you had your time again I, I don't I, you know I, I, I get asked this question a lot with, with fitness and business you know it's the old uh, what would you do differently yeah. type of thing I don't think I'd do anything differently because you learn lessons from mm. your mistakes um, but I think when I was, you know, when I was young, as as most young guys do, um, you know, the idea of spot training it was yeah. it was probably a big one. You know, the idea of you know if I do all these sit ups, I'll get the, you know these abs, and not really yeah. understanding diet and caloric yeah. deficit, and just you know trying to take spot training, um, you know, as a as as kind of gospel. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're younger, you not so much anymore. But back when I was young, you know, you used to read Muscle Mag and they used to mm. preach all that sort of yeah. stuff as well. Um, and it's just it's just not true, you know, yeah. that, that yeah. sort of thing. But um, but you know I've, I've I've made a lot of a lot of lifting mistakes, yeah. but nothing that I would you know change because you know if I didn't make the mistakes, I wouldn't yeah. learn from them. And what type of um, as a as a teenager were you an ectomorph or did you struggle to put on size yeah. and weight? Or yeah, you, absolutely, yeah? man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was a skinny dude. Yeah, yeah. and when did yeah. you kind of figure out? The whole nutrition side of things, or more so, like figure out that you should be taking in more calories than you're burning. I think when when I stopped playing basketball, yeah, um, and I took more of an interest in the competitive side of, of the sport in, yeah. in bodybuilding, yeah, um, was really when I started to take a really keen interest in nutrition because I think. Yeah. You know, as a lifter, you reach that point with when you're doing it for you know to improve your athletic abilities for a sport. You don't really worry about the nutrition, yeah. right? It's yeah. kind of like, and you get good results yeah. because you're a newbie, so you make yeah. newbie gains. Yeah. But then, kind of as you get more into it, and you take, you know, you get your gains start to plateau a little bit. Your yeah. progress plateaus. You go, okay, I need now need to look at what I'm actually fueling yeah, my body with. Um, and I think that's that's really when I started to take a keen interest in nutrition. If there was one thing I could change, it would have been 
if I knew now, uh, if, if, sorry, if I knew back then what I know now with nutrition as mm. a basketballer, I would have been a much better basketballer Basketball, yeah. because I would have been yeah. fueling my body a lot yeah. better. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, but yeah, so to answer your question, definitely I think when I, when I started, you know, taking a much more interest in, in the competitive side of bodybuilding yeah. was really when I started taking my nutrition a lot more seriously. Yeah. And when was the first time you stepped on the stage? Uh, when I was 19. 19. Did my, did my yeah. first competition when I was 19. Um, competed in the IMBA state titles here, yeah. in, uh, here in Adelaide yeah. um, in the teenage division, yeah. obviously, as a 19 yeah. year old. Uh, and that was, that was my, first, my first comp. And from then, was it kind of consistently year to year, or did you have a break through, throughout yeah, so, that stage? Yeah, so what I did, uh, well, you, you, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, going back into the archives now, I have to think about this one. So I did the, the first comp, and then I took, because of the way the age categories worked back then, it was teenage, juniors was, tw- so teenage was like 19 and yeah. under, juniors was 21 and under, and then it was straight into the open. So yeah. I did... My first comp when I was 19, then I took the next year off and then did the one after that when I was 21. So I put yeah. me like the top level of juniors. Mm-hmm. Then I took, after that comp, I took, uh, I think it was three years off. I don't think I competed again until I was 24 because I had to go into the opens. Okay. And so going from the age group yeah. divisions, the teenage yeah. and the juniors to competing against, you know, guys that are in their 30s. Yeah. Um, was a big step up, so I needed time to, to kind to of grow. grow. Yeah. yeah, so then I can, I think it was two or three years, um, competed then and then did a few shows back to back to back, um, and this is all in natural bodybuilding. Yeah. And then men's physique uh, competitions yeah. came out. So back when I first started competing, that didn't exist. It yeah. was, you know, now there's so many different divisions. You've got, you know, muscle yeah. model, fitness model, yeah. men's physique. Especially the IBA. Oh, yeah. It's just uh, incredible. Yeah. Back then it was bodybuilding or bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, that was your choice. And so then when the men's physique competitions came out and I kind of swapped over from the natural bodybuilding side of things to the men's physique side of things, yeah. um, that was now four years ago. Yeah. Um, and then I've competed pretty much every year. For, for the last four years. So. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And obviously, it's been a fairly long time, sorry, since you've done your first competition, or it's yeah. been a good amount of time in between. Yeah. What, uh, yeah, at this current stage, what is your philosophy on, on training? Obviously, there's a lot of contrasting um, theories on what style of training works best for, sure. um, you know, whether it be natural or, yeah. or someone that's enhanced. Um, yeah. What is your philosophy on training? Is it kind of low reps, heavy weight, high frequency, um, yeah. high volume, what, what do you kind of stick with? Yeah, look, it's a good question, man. And, you know, I think to a certain point, everybody is a little bit individual. Yeah. Everybody is a little bit different. So what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for, you know, people that are listening yeah. right now. Um, but my my philosophy on training is I train, I spend most of my time in the hypertrophy rep range. Yeah. So reaching failure between 8 to 12 reps cool. um, per yeah. set. Yeah hitting three to five sets per exercise and you know hitting three to five exercises per muscle group. Okay. Um, I train bro style, so yeah. you know I do chest one day, yeah, yeah, back yeah. another day, arms yeah. another day. I don't do push pull or anything yeah. like that. Have you ever tried push pull? Or yeah, absolutely. Gone to different, yeah, 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 yeah most definitely. Um, and you found this works best for you? I, I find this works yeah. best for me. The, the, the problem I found with, with push pull is I, I was never really able to get good mind muscle connection yeah you know and yeah. you, because you go in you train push you hit chest shoulders and triceps it's a lot of different muscle groups yeah. to focus on and then secondly i mean if you're trying to hit three to five exercises per muscle group you you know if you're hitting chest shoulders and triceps in one workout yeah. you're hitting you know 15 different yeah. exercises yeah. so you train for four hours yeah um so for me it, it you know based on the way i like to train and my philosophy yeah the push pull split doesn't really fit with with that well, philosophy. You train, yeah. And you say you train, I guess, bro. Yes. So does that mean that you're training everything once a week or are you still hitting each muscle group twice or are you prioritizing so things? Yeah, I hit, I hit everything once a week, yeah. um, but I hit my, my weakest muscle group, which is my chest. Yeah. Um, I hit that twice a week. Okay. Yeah, awesome. but, but everything else is once a week. Yeah. yeah. And in regards to nutrition, what's your approach, uh, whether it be off season or, yeah. or contest prep, are you uh, kind of, I guess, I, I hate the way it's kind of broken up now, but are you a clean eater or you follow macros, flexible yeah. dieting, or yeah, what, are you, yeah. what, is, what, is, what is your approach? Yeah, um, I, I would consider myself a, a clean eater. Yeah. I'm definitely not not a flexible dieter. Yeah. Um, but I mean, when you when you say you know if it fits your macros, 
whether you're a clean eater or a flexible dieter, everybody's fitting macros. Right, right, yeah. right so you either, you either choose to fit them with, uh, with, with junk food, yeah. in which case you're a flexible dieter, yeah. uh, or you choose to fit them with whole foods, in which case you're classed a clean eater. Yeah. But everybody is if it fits your yeah. macros. Everybody yeah. is trying to fit some sort of macronutrient plan. If we, if we didn't, nobody would progress. Yeah. Um, but my, my philosophy to, to dieting you know, has changed over the years as well as I've kind of progressed as an athlete. Back when I was younger, it used to be, okay, you know, I've picked a competition that I'm going to compete in, um, so I'll start dieting you know, when I first started, I was like 12 weeks out, yeah. and I extended 16. Yeah. And, you know, by the time I got to the kind of middle of my com- competitive career, it was 20, you know, 20 weeks yeah. out. It was kind of like, yeah, that's when I start prepping. Yeah. So for those 20 weeks, it would be you know, follow a diet, hit macros every day, being a clean eater, yeah. I hit them with whole foods, yeah. worry about carbohydrate timing, etc., etc. But when I was in my quote unquote off season, yeah. it would be, you know, just kind of eat what you want. Yeah. Don't really follow anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you kind of just knuckle down for that contest practice. Right. Right. Whereas now, um, you know, I follow a diet year round. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, it's not necessarily a caloric deficit diet, you know, preparing for a competition. Yeah. But if it's the if it's an off season, yeah. you know, I don't really have an off season anymore. Yeah. It's, I'm trying to eat in a caloric surplus purposefully yeah. to increase my metabolic capacity. Mm. So that when I start dieting for a competition, you know, I'm starting yeah. at a much higher metabolic intake or caloric intake. So I can, you know, get a lot leaner, diet for a lot longer, yeah. um, and get in the best the best shape I can for stage. So yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, two things there. Like the first thing, you, you hit the nail on the head. I think so many people now that are getting introduced to flexible dieting or yeah. if fit your macros automatically yeah. think, and it's mainly the people who promote flexible dieting stuff's yeah. fault. But yeah. that if the purpose is to try and eat as much shit as you can, whereas yeah. like you said, you know, you can be a flexible dieter mm-hmm. and just rotate your food sources, mm-hmm. eating uh, nutrient dense foods. Yeah. Which a lot of people don't exactly understand. But, um, and then the second thing is, uh, I think people competing or starting to compete now mm-hmm. really don't prioritize their off season. I think they put all their focus on contest press. Yeah. When, you know, like yeah. I'm at the point now, like where I'm in my off season, by the end of, by the time I compete again, it will have been uh, 20 months. Mm-hmm. And like I've put more focus on my off season than I have in my preps. Because, yeah. you know, by the time you get to the prep, you're, all the work's done really. You're just, yeah. you're just kind of sharpening things up. So, 100%. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, the, the, the quality of, because now, back when I started competing, bodybuilding was so niche, you know, yeah. like no, no one was interested in yeah. But, it, but now because it's you know it's really it still it's is niche but it's but well it, it yeah. almost is you yeah. know it's burst out of that a yeah. lot more people are interested in it and then obviously you get a lot more people that are really good at it mm-hmm. so if you want to be good now um, you can't just diet for 20 weeks leading into a show yeah. you you know if you want to mix it with the best of the best guys you need to be contest prep year round, year yeah. round yeah. you know so yeah. it's definitely changed yeah. for sure and which out of those uh, out of those training sessions you do throughout the week, which one or which muscle group is your favourite to train, and which exercise would be your favourite? Oh, that's a tough question, man. I, I look, I, I love I love training everything. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think different workouts. I enjoy them for different reasons. Um, you know, I, I at the moment, if you ask me, probably my favourite workouts at the moment are my back workouts. Yeah. Um, I'm just going through a phase where I really enjoy training enjoy back. Training. Yeah, <laughs> I can't yeah. really say why. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I was fortunate enough to do a back workout with Kai Green um, yeah, towards, really. the, towards the end of last year. And I yeah. think, you know, every time now I train back, I'm thinking about that workout and, yeah. you know, trying to replicate the yeah. intensity and, you know, the, the volume and that. So I guess that's probably why I enjoy training. Is that back. a bit of an eye opener to how he trains or was oh, it yeah. just a completely different other level? Yeah, no, yeah. It, was, it was more importantly than an eye opener to, to how. Kai trains it was an eye opener to um, what 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 your body's capable of. Yeah. So you know the the one thing that I get all the time because we do at Massive Joe's we do a lot of different training events. You know we've trained yeah. together before. Yeah. Um, we do open coming trains where we get you know people to come train with us and whatnot. And the consistent feedback that I get from guys that I train with who have never trained with me before is you know the intensity is is a lot it's a lot more intense yeah. than how I normally train. Yeah. And then so effectively, that's what I experienced when I trained with Kai, yeah. is I was like, I've never trained with that sort of intensity yeah. before. And I've trained with a lot of guys, I've trained yeah. you know, with, with a bunch of guys, yeah. Ronnie Coleman, uh, Doug Miller, the, the best natural pro on the on the planet. Um, you know, I've trained with a lot of different athletes, but Kai was level. just a different level. I yeah. was like, you know, I thought I was training 
with a high intensity. Yeah. I thought this was like, you, like, you can't train any, yeah. any more intense than this. And then we go and train with Kai and it was like, wow, this is yeah. just, there's a whole different yeah. level. You know, and when, so, when you say a higher intensity, is that shorter rest periods, like heavier sets? Is it more uh, it's, training it's, failure or what is it? It's just like, for example, let's say, let's say you take a back workout, for example. Yeah. And so you might hit, you know, five, six, you know, big workout, you might hit seven different exercises yeah. and, you know, go on balls to the wall for all yeah. of them. You get to the end of the seven, you're like, man, my back is screwed. Like, that's it. You know, I've yeah. been training for two hours. I'm done. So then Kai will take that and then add another four exercises on top, yeah, okay. another hour of training until you literally, like, cannot pick a weight up. <laughs> That's you know that's that's the kind of yeah you know it's it's like you know you think your body's done you think you've failed well let's go and train for another hour yeah, on top yeah. of that yeah that's insane yeah um, so you mentioned that you're in a calorie surplus now so yeah. obviously um, not in a comp, a comp prep phase or Correct. a dieting phase yeah. or yeah deficit phase so yeah uh, when do you plan on stepping on stage next. Uh, that's a good question, man. Yeah. That's a very good question. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure yeah. just yet. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll yeah we'll, we'll see how we go so, yeah. towards towards the end of the year. Yeah. But you know the the good thing about the way that I go about my my quote unquote off season yeah. now is I'll continuously you know increase my my calories. So one thing that a lot of people don't understand is a lot of people get when you're in caloric deficit when you're preparing for a bodybuilding show and you're trying to reduce body fat mm-hmm. is you reach plateaus. Yeah. Right. So you reach a plateau, you have to decrease your, your calorie intake yeah. or increase your caloric yeah, output, sure. do, yeah. do more do more cardio, that yeah. sort of thing, until you reach another plateau, yeah. you do the same thing, another plateau, you do the same thing. Well, your body does the same thing in the opposite direction, yeah. right? So when you're in caloric surplus, yeah. is your body will upregulate metabolic rate mm-hmm. um, and you plateau. So the way that I go about my quote unquote off season diet now is I'll you know, continuously increase my, my caloric intake um, you know, indefinitely. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, I can, I can pick a competition when I want to, you know, compete in, yeah. um, and then flip my caloric surplus on its head at whatever point in time I want, and yeah. go from surplus to deficit, yeah. and you know, get ready for a show. Sure, yeah. um, so there's, you know, it, it's a completely different mindset yeah. to how most people prep for, yeah. for competitions. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that actually. So I've got my kind of own, own theory on this, and from uh, comp to comp or prep to prep. Sorry, I'll. Yeah like you said, try and push my calorie intake to a point each off season or, or mm-hmm. calorie surplus phase so that when I diet down, um, hopefully I'll be dieting on higher calories or yeah. or an extended period of time and be able to eat more food and still lose fat. Yeah. Do you think um, by pushing your calories higher throughout the off season and mm-hmm. staying at a relatively good body fat, mm-hmm. you actually can increase that that's um, the lowest point of your calorie deficit, or do you most think you'll definitely. always end up back at that no, similar spot? No, no, most definitely. That's yeah. the whole. That's the whole point. Yeah, is it's you know it, it's called your um, your uh, uh, capa- effectively your metabolic capacity yeah. is is what it is. Yeah. So if you can increase your metabolic capacity, which is the amount of calories your body can consume yeah. and maintain body weight, so not put on any weight, yeah. um, you know you you're then able to get as lean as you would have gotten yeah. in the past, but consume more calories. Yeah. So if you think about, a real good example is if you think about somebody who starts at, let's pick a body, let's say 10% body fat, yeah. right? So let's say someone weighs 100 kilos at 10% body fat, they start prepping for a contest 20 weeks out, and their caloric maintenance is 3,000 calories. Yeah. You take that exact same person who's been increasing their caloric surplus consistently over the off season, increasing their body, metabolic capacity, so exactly the same person, 100 kilos, 10% body fat, yeah. starts dieting on 5,000 mm. calories. Yeah. Who do you think has the bigger metabolic capacity? Yeah, exactly. It's the guy that starts on yeah. 5,000. And therefore, you know, let's say 20 weeks down the track, who's going to be able to get leaner? Yeah. The guy that started on 5,000 yeah. because he's got more capacity when he hits those plateaus during a caloric deficit mm. to then go and push through those plateaus time and time again. Yeah. Whereas the guy that started on 3,000, I mean, you know, a hundred kilo, ten right. percent dude. By the yeah. time you get down to eighteen hundred calories, that's it, man. Yeah, you yeah. Know, you can't do a whole lot else. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. And like, because yeah. like I said, I've, by the time I prep again, it'll be twenty months, which will be kind of midway through this year. Yeah. And a few people have said, like, why, why are you continuing your off season? Well, not only do I need to put on size, but you know, hopefully by the time I prep again, like, yeah. like, like we just spoke about, I can be kind of dieting down on higher calories and um, 
and staying fuller and looking better. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so as a natural, you have to be one of the best guys to ask this question. As a natural athlete, yeah. what are the top supplements that you would suggest using or supplements that are actually worth your money and, yeah. and going to give you a, a positive, uh, or a, what am I trying to say, give, give you some sort of benefit. Give you a bang for your buck. Yeah, yeah, sort of thing. One, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I, you know, I, I've got kind of like a top list of, of, you know, supplements that are like my foundational type supplements that I won't really go without. Yeah. Um, the first one is obviously protein powder, um, which I don't generally consider a supplement because if you consume enough protein through whole foods, you don't need to be using a protein yeah. powder. But the fact of the matter is, you know, a lot of us, it, firstly, it's expensive to get mm. protein from whole foods. Yeah. Um, and secondly, you know, it's convenient and tasty. Yeah, and, you know, um, just nice to have yeah. it from a protein powder. So I think it, you know a good everyday protein yeah. powder, um, whey protein, mm-hmm. um, whey protein concentrate. As a matter of fact, is yeah, the okay. best by with yeah. biological value. Yeah. Um, the next thing you know, next most important supplement from my perspective are your branch chain amino acids. Yeah. Um, for use during the day, but more importantly for use during workout training. Yeah. Um, you know I think BCAAs are you know by far the most uh, critical supplement. Um, that you can take as a, as a natural athlete, yeah. at least. and even in an enhanced athlete, yeah. you know, enhanced athletes can't get BCAAs from any other source. Yeah. You know, so you have to get even in a fed state. So if you're in a calorie surplus and yeah. you're training at the end of the day and you're mm-hmm. taking in a good amount of food and yeah. um, amino acids from your food already, yeah, uh, do you reckon it's still as beneficial to have your aminos when you train as it would be if you were fasted first thing in the morning? Most definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're obviously going to be much more important if you're fasted yeah. first thing in the morning. But you know, correct intake of BCAAs, yeah, which yeah. are essential amino acids, is, yeah. is is crucial. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Um, those would be my 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 definite definite top twos that yeah, I think yeah. every athlete should be using those yeah. two. Um, and then you know, it it really comes down to to your personal kind of preference and really what you need, um, which is going to be quite individual. So you might go, okay, well, my next most important supplement is is creatine. Um, or my next most important supplement is is a you know a protein peptide su- type supplement. Yeah. Or you know I know that I train late at night and my energy levels are usually low. So for me the next most important might be a good pre workout supplement. Yeah. yeah. Um, or you know I'm in my late thirties, therefore I need to start looking at hormone supplementation. Yeah, okay, so yeah. my next most important one might be a test booster. Test booster yeah. Um, you know the list is. Is quite long, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> You've seen my supplement yeah. stack. I take all sorts of stuff. Yeah, but bre- breaking it down to basics, you know, a good everyday whey protein powder, yeah. um, a good BCAA supplement that you can use during your workouts, and, and then in between and with meals as well, yeah, um, would definitely be the top two. Yeah, and and like I train uh, a fair few athletes as well, whether sure. it be kind of amateur or professional level. Mm-hmm. You think those two supplements? Uh, are a go-to as well. Yeah, most definitely. definitely yeah. yeah, yeah, for performance athletes. Yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. absolutely. Awesome. I mean, when I was when I first started taking supplements, um, BCAs didn't exist back then. Yeah, you, you could get them, but they were like capsules. Yeah. Um, but back when I, take a yeah, well, that's yeah. it. Back when I first started taking supplements, it was whey protein um, and creatine. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're my two go-tos as a performance athlete. That's when you were playing basketball. That's it. Yeah. 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 That was like when I was like 14, 15 yeah. years old. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next one. Dealing with adversity, whether it be you know from a competition, whether it be something to do with business, it might be something that's gone wrong with the business or yeah. a loss you've had in the business. Mm-hmm. How do you go about dealing with adversity? Uh, you you focus. Well, with, this is what I do: is I focus on the fact that um, everything is short term. So you know whatever adversity you're going through, you know it may last an hour, it may last a day, it may last a week, a month, six months, a year. Um, it's short term and it, it will pass at some point. Um, you know, and I've experienced adversity both from you know fitness perspective with you know competitions and yeah. whatnot, and then from a business perspective, you know, personal life perspective. Yeah. Everyone goes through tough times, um, but you know I think if you can you, you know focus and appreciate that everything is short term um, and that adversity is you know whatever shape they may take will pass. Um, you know you can kind of stay positive and. You know, yeah. ride the wave, yeah. so to speak. Uh, two more questions. First one, yeah. this is going to be a massive punt, and we're going to come back to this if you're right, which mm-hmm. would be amazing if you are. Mm-hmm. 2017 Mr. Olympia. Yeah. Men's physique and bodybuilding, who are you picking? Uh, bodybuilding will be will be Phil Heath, yeah. most definitely. Yeah. yeah, I think the only guy that can beat Phil 
um, and it won't be this year. Uh, it'll probably be in two, three, four, five years maybe. Um, will be Dallas Macaba. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty certain of that, just because I, you know, I see the progress that Dallas has made over the last few years, and um, if he can continue to keep that progress up, he'll be the guy that'll be that'll beat Phil. Yeah. Um, and there's really no one I can see beating Phil apart from Dallas yeah, at the moment. Really, yeah. Unless there's someone who comes up behind Dallas and progresses even quicker than he yeah, does. Yeah. Um, which once again I can't yeah. see happening because I would have heard of him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think Phil Heath most definitely. Uh, men's physique, honestly, man, like your guess would be Maybe as good as mine. Anyone, yeah. Probably the guess of someone walking down the street who <laughs> yeah. has no idea what men's physique is. Like we'd probably, we'd probably, yeah, <laughs> would probably be as good as mine because it's a category that's that's continuously changing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the, I, I think the, the the judging criteria um, is so wishy washy at the moment that you know they they could decide in two thousand seventeen that. Okay, now we've got classic physique, so we want guys who look like Jeremy Buendia and Jeremy Potvin and, you know, these types of, you know, very muscular guys, we don't want them in the men's physique category, yeah. so we're actually going to place them last. And yeah. that would be a good message for them that they need to move up to classic, classic physique. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly don't know. Yeah. I don't know where it's heading. Yeah. Um, and I don't think the IFBB knows where it's heading mm -hmm. either, which is why they keep creating new divisions. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and I think you can, you can see <laughs> yeah. that with the competitors too, like yeah. um, the feedback that you see post yeah. Olympia, yeah. it's just nobody knows. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just all over the place, so um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I really don't know, man, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not too sure where the men's physique category is going to go, yeah. but bodybuilding will definitely be for you. Cool. Yeah. Alright, we'll yeah. come back to this, we'll come yeah. back to this. Uh, last question, where, where is Massive Joe's, or what is Massive Joe's doing in 2017? Any big plans or? Yeah, man, yeah, so we, we've got a, you know, we've always got a lot of things happening. 2017 is gonna be a, a particularly big year for us. Yeah. Uh, we've got another three retail stores opening this year awesome. um, in at least two new states. So we're, we're opening a Sydney store, um, we're opening a Queensland-based store, um, and then we're the third store that we do towards the end of this year, um, we're not 100% sure where it's going to be yet. Could okay. be in another new state, or yeah. we could go back to Western Australia. We could okay. go back to Victoria. We could yeah. go back to New South Wales and open a second store over there. Yeah. Um, so we've got a lot happening from the retail point of view. Yeah. Uh, we're exhibiting internationally once again this year. So we'll yeah. be over at Body Power in the UK with Team J Apparel. Um, we possibly be at the Olympia Expo in Las Sweet. Vegas with Team J Apparel as well. Um, yeah, we we got a lot going on, man. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> any uh, any future plans of going international with with um, the supplement stores? Uh, probably not with the supplement stores, man. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of difficult for an Australian company to go international with supplements okay. because a lot of the supplements are sourced from the US. Um, you really have to be a US based yeah. company to be able to do that, or based in the country that you're operating with. Yeah. Um, but the apparel side of things is different, which is why we do the international yeah. expos with, with yeah. TMJ Apparel because you know you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but supplements, you know, being being that that grey area between foods and therapeutics, and you know, different countries have different laws and how they're regulated, and you know, it's it's a it's really quite quite uh, difficult to do it if you're not the company making the products based in the US. Yeah, it's understandable. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's it for me, mate. So I really appreciate you coming on today. Um, You're welcome, and man. I'm Thanks sure we'll get some me. really good feedback um, from the episode. But um, if there's anything else you want to add, feel free to, feel free to uh, throw that out there now. But if not, we'll, um, we'll finish up. Absolutely, man. No, it's been, a, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks for the awesome. opportunity. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, please do uh, leave a review and subscribe if you haven't already and check out some of the, uh, the past episodes. And uh, I'll chat to you guys again next week. Easy.